Good morning everyone and welcome back to yet another episode of our LEGO Legend of Zelda Custom Set Showcase Wave 2, where today we'll be taking a look at Z0022 with 157 pieces, Gandalf Horseback Jewel from Twilight Princess, and it's an odd one. As I mentioned, this is set number Z0022, uh, Ganondorf Horseback Jewel for ages 8 plus with 157 pieces, retailing for 20 Great British Pounds with 3 minifigures. And this is a sort of a weird one, it's sort of 18 plus, but it's also not. We'll get into that in just a second. Uh, the description should shed a bit of light onto this one, but uh, let's get into that. So, bring the climactic conclusion of Twilight Princess to life with this charming kinetic sculpture simulating the Horseback Jewel against Ganondorf. Easily displayable and with exclusive Ganondorf minifigure, this is one for collectors, however those with smaller hands and bigger imaginations can rebuild this into the sword fight arena for more creative showdown, or just to chase Ganondorf around the living room on his horse. So you heard it there, this build is a kinetic sculpture, designed more as a display piece of the kind of vein as Hedwig from Harry Potter, but um, definitely not Hedwig from Harry Potter. So it's just a small display piece for adults, or for children, or for teenagers, or for children to play with. As you heard me mention, it wouldn't take much effort to turn this into an olive green arena for Link and Ganondorf to have their final uh, on foot on foot showdown on, really. Uh, and I think that's a really nice idea. So let's get into this very odd set. So inside our box, we have two bags and an instruction manual. And inside of our instruction manual, we can see that bag one builds the mechanism and the Gandalf and Twilight Princess Link minifigures. And bag two builds the Zelda minifigure, the top landscape and a pony of the horse and Ganondorf's horse. So, if you don't know what a kinetic sculpture is, it's basically turn the crank and the thing moves. And in this case, it's nice and simple. Horses go up and down in opposite positions like they're galloping. So, Link is for the chasing and off. <laughs> um, and this was an interesting idea to come up with. I mean, personally, I like it because I knew I wanted to do the Ganondorf Link battle, but I didn't want to do Beast Ganon, I didn't want to do Puppet Zelda yet. Um, and I didn't particularly think that the sword fight would be particularly engaging. I mean, it's literally a green field and all you do is stab Ganondorf. So if you really wanted to, that's what I meant by a child. You just rip the top off, have, remove the gears, keep the mountains, and you can have your little sword fight. Maybe even on the rotating platforms like uh, Jewel and Mustafa or, or um, Starkiller Base. But in the, in the end, I thought a kinetic sculpture which allowed the horses to chase each other for eternity for such an iconic part of the end of Twilight Princess would be good for both adults and children, as children would love to gallop two horses around. It's a cheap, playable set with some really desirable figures, so that's the reason it exists. Here's a top-down showing you the snot work in detail, the two platforms, and you can just start to see the crank around the back, which is in coral for some reason. Here is that crank as well, and you can see the gear shafts around the back. The whole thing is an 8 by 14 I believe, build. And on the front, we have uh, three stickers or prints, unsure which, a 2x4 with a Triforce, which would just be useful, and two 2x6s with the words Twilight and Princess on in the Hylia Beta Serif font, you can see the mountains in the back more clearly, as well as what the platform looks lifted up. There's really not much to show you there, so let's move on to the minifigures, and for the third time this way, we can see the Link Twilight Princess minifigure using the Series 20 uh, collectible minifigure series Knight's Sword, the same hairpiece from Wave 1 recolored in a more muted colour scheme, the new rounded and not bug-eyed look with blue eyes and the Hylian shield from Wave 1, as well as his dual molded legs with green printing at the top. There's the reference imagery for you, and let's move on to someone different. But obviously, if I needed to include Zelda in this set, she had to be here, and she is here using the dress piece in white with some printing, uh, some lavender printing that goes tonally to white, as well as some pearl gold, and obviously some purple towards the top, which goes into her torso, uh, which is fairly simple to be honest. She's also got some arms which are not dual molded, white with gold printing at the top, and then her hair piece is actually a reuse or a modification of Elrond with either some printing or a new mold at the top for her crown work and she's looking a bit concerned because Zelda never smiles in this game. Ever. Why Twilight Princess? Sometimes I wonder. Anyway, so she's here, 
finally, um, I know you guys probably wanted a Zelda that wasn't Breath of the Wild Zelda for a while now, but she's here. Um, she's still using Bug Eyes for some reason because I'm an inconsistent person, so let's move on. To Ganondorf, who is back to using normal eyes, and it was shocking to me that besides Phantom Ganon from uh, the first CMF series, this is actually the first Ganon, Ganondorf, or any Ganon variant that I've done, ever. So um, that just shows you about which games I play, <laughs> uh, if I'm still focused on um, Majora and... Um, uh, demise and um, gear him, <laughs> but um, here he is, and honestly, I think he's looking great. He's been legoized slightly. You can see he's got some fantastic printing across the waist and legs and torso. Some simple arms that are not jewel molded. Some olive green hands, and then his hairpiece is using a new mold created for him. The beard is actually printed. However, his sideburns ears and the top headpiece are all uh, a one mold head attachment. The eyes are obviously round like I said and he's just frowning because he's concentrating on riding his horse. To be honest, yeah, he looks alright. He looks sort of like he should do. I stayed more away from red hair and went for orange. Oh, and he's also got a cape around the back. No sort of a six sages because you know how I feel by now. No molded swords. Moving on into the brick character range, we have a Pona, also from Twilight Princess, and she is the exact same as the Prince Rallis Escort set. So we just left her here. She can appear in both. It's fine. Same simple printing. Check out that video if you want to learn more about a Pona in this set. But the new horse for this set is the Ganondorf's horse from Twilight Princess. And we actually do have imagery of this, and it's a very evil looking horse. Um, to be honest, I feel like I'd go back and change the printing on this guy. I like having the plain brown saddle and the plain black like leg body piece. The eye looks good and so does the mane, but I feel like he needs the dreadlocks. Uh, it's a dreadlocked horse, he really needs them. And then maybe the bridle as well, because it's more of a important part of this horse. But I still think he looks good in plain black. And obviously, if you're buying this set, you're buying it either for the fact that it moves, in which case you won't see the horse, or for the minifigures. Let's be honest, it's a quick way to get the main three. So, before we go on... Let's go and take a look at the build in studio. Well, I warn you, there isn't much to see. So over here in studio, it's basically the exact same as you expected. You can see that it's built onto 8 by 16 uh, plate size. And I guess you get a bit of a clearer look at the thing. It's basically an olive box with a snot work uh, along the front. Um, two jumping platforms and a crank around the back. But what I will do as we are here is I will hide some of these pieces for you just to give you a somewhat idea of the mechanism. Now, I tried my best, but I have absolutely no clue if this mechanism works or not. So if anyone could confirm that in the comments, as well as tell me if this whole build idea is rubbish, that would be appreciated. Now, as far as I'm aware, I'm using gears that are in system, but this gear turns, then the side gears turn, and then these uh, blue cams push these Technic axles up. One should be up when one is down, but I haven't done that here. <laughs> Woo, showmanship. 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, let me do that now to illustrate my point. It's kind of crucial. But anyway, the point is that these cams would be up when the other is down, pushing one into the heart sky and one into the floor. But it's a simple build, it's a cheap build. We would be all lying if we said we weren't here for the minifigures, but the idea of it being kinetic instead of just a wasted, uh, weird playset that doesn't have any function and it's basically a piece of ground, I thought this was the more interesting of the two options. So, let's go back and close up. So, as I just said, um, I kind of want to hear what you guys think. Would you prefer if LEGO made something like this instead of, I guess olive field with small debris that can be knocked over into Ganondorf? I'm not really sure what I'd want, to be honest. I feel like Lego could possibly pull the playset off. But I also think that this kinetic sculpture is nice. Yeah, it's not the most iconic moment, and I could have chosen any one of hundreds of scenes to turn into kinetic sculpture. I mean, there's probably even a bird out there like the Loftwing, which could basically become the Hedwig. Ooh, maybe I should write that down. Either way, it's not the most iconic moment to be turned into kinetic, nor is it the best representation of a playset at this scale. But let's move on from that, leave your th thoughts down below, and let's talk about next week, which is the first ever dual set showcase, where we'll be looking at set Z0017 and set Z0018. 
because they're basically one of the same. I mean, if you can't work out what that silhouette is, maybe you need to reconsider what Zelda games you've looked at. I mean, they're pretty obvious, really, aren't they? If they're not obvious, well, leave your guesses down below. Let me know what you think. Maybe I'll give you a tease in advance. But if not, please consider subscribing, um, and I'll see you next week. Bye! <laughs>